Today on FTR TV, we're gonna clean out that wave maker. G'day everyone, my name is David Mayer, welcome back to First Time Reefer TV. And today, my friends, we're gonna clean out this little Nero 5 wave maker that I've got in the tank here. But first things first, I fucked up really, really badly when I was doing my thank you video to uh, uh, about the recent uh, bushfire fundraiser. There is one very, very important person that I forgot to thank. Um, and that is James Tunchen from Nature Aquariums, the guy that actually did majority of the work for the event um, and was the guy that was communicating with me and did everything. I can't believe I forgot to uh, thank him. And that's probably why I should script a lot of my stuff so I don't forget important things like that. But unfortunately, I don't have time to script. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, James from Nature Aquariums. And man, I'm so sorry, I feel terrible for not thanking you, but uh, to make up for it, everyone that watches this video, please hit up James Tunchen on Facebook and send him a thank you message uh, for all of his efforts that he put in to help orchestrate the uh, bushfire fundraiser at Nature Creams. On that note, we did end up raising a total of, can you see that? Yeah, can you see it? So our final tally, once we uh, had everything finished and done, it was $20,303. I think a stellar effort from everyone that was involved and thank you to, uh, again to everyone that supported the event uh, and thank you to you guys, especially to everyone that purchased tickets, uh, raffle tickets, both online and in store. Um, it was such a great experience, it was really good. And it was donated to the Australian Red Cross. Whether you guys uh, agree with that decision or not, unfortunately that was the decision that I made. If you do have a charity of your own choice, please feel free to organize your own fundraiser and you guys can donate to whomever you like. But uh, enough of that, $20,303, I thought that was pretty awesome. So uh, well done to everyone that was involved. Getting into it today, we're gonna talk about cleaning a wave maker. Now, obviously when you get a wave maker that is brand new, it is squeaky clean, it is performing beautifully, you get heaps of flow out of them, heaps of action in your corals, um, and then inevitably over time as it's operating and it gets clogged up with a bit of detritus, algae and slime builds up on it, it's gonna slow down and you're gonna lose a little bit of power performance out of your wave maker. So cleaning your equipment is really important. Uh, also to make sure that uh, obviously the item lasts for a long time and performs as close to 100% as it can. This tank here, I have a J-Bow Crossflow, um, which mm, I think it's a great wave maker for the price. Uh, heaps of flow out of it, but I think for my tank, it's probably not the most suitable. Um, I really, really love the uh, AI Nero 5 because it's a super low profile. It's got 11,000 liters per hour of flow, and the app is super intuitive. I can connect to it very, very simply. I just click on the My AI app. It comes up with the little wave maker there. I hit on that, and within one, two, three, three to five seconds it's connected and I can turn it off on 100%, go into a feed mode, change the schedule. It's such an easy app to use. So that's what makes it one of my favorites. Uh, so I'm thinking of actually getting a second one if I can. So apparently you can sync them so they can pulse together or at opposite ends. I'll probably run one of the front side and one of the back side and just pulsing together. Um, because three foot, I think that'd be more than enough for two of those. So. Uh, in the market for one of those. If you got one second hand, let me know. Uh, but to clean them, there's a couple of different ways. Obviously, we go to all of these efforts uh, to get our cable management really beautiful, really sexy. So pulling the wave maker apart and taking it out and scrubbing it down can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So in that situation, having a bucket on hand is very, very good because you can just put the wave maker in there and give it a scrub. You can use something like a toothbrush, doesn't have to be on a on a chopstick like this. 
Um, but the toothbrush is really good to clean them out. Um, and on top of the toothbrush using a, like a scourer as well. Oh, my baby's crying, I'll be back. Like I said, there's a couple of things that you can use to scrub it. This toothbrush is fantastic to get into all the nooks and crannies and give it a good scrub. Using a scourer um, like this is fantastic as well because it allows you to really give a good scrub on that algae. Um, now soaking the wave maker, there's a couple of different products. I used to use a uh, mixture of vinegar and water 50-50, um, but I've read recently that that's actually not that great for the palm and not good for the seals. So uh, a, a, another good alternative is using this citric acid that you can just get from your local supermarket. Uh, I'm using one of these tubs mixed into two liters of water and uh, just allow your pumps to soak in there. So, so citric acid is a much better option than the vinegar because it doesn't damage the seals, but it does also do a very good job of cleaning the pump. So we're gonna dump this container of citric acid into two liters of water, give the Nero a good soak, um, and I'll show you how I scrub down the pump and take it apart as well. So first things first, we're gonna make up the solution. So we're gonna measure out two liters of water, that's pretty much two liters. And then we're gonna empty this whole container. The citric acid, lid just pops off like that. Just powder inside, tip that in. And give it a good stir with a trusty chopstick. It should, uh, it should dissolve pretty quickly. Give it a taste. Nah, just joking, don't do that. So that is now dissolved. So completely dissolved, that's pretty quick. Uh, this is just RO water as well, by the way. Uh, so now I'll take you over to the tank and we'll have a look at uh, soaking the wave maker. So now we've got the solution in the bucket here. Got a wave maker there, so I'm just gonna turn that off quickly. Right, jump into the earth. the wave maker off. Now the great thing about the Nero is the magnets are actually separate from the uh, the wave maker itself so just, it can be the pull up. I actually want to soak the magnet anyway but as you can see the wave maker is completely separate from the magnet in the tank. And I'm just going to get into there. I'll get this out anyway because that's pretty filthy as well. It has an inside magnet that's a little bit curved, and you've got the outside magnet, which I should take off just in case that drops off. We're just going to soak it in there. And I'll give it about probably 10 minutes or so. I have no idea how long I should be soaking it for, but we'll give it 10 minutes and then we'll come back and have a look at see how it's gone. It's been sitting in there for about 20 minutes or so now. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I just want to turn it on and see how much uh, the flow alone will be able to clean this wave maker, so time for the best. Hoping it's going to magically clean the pump completely, but clearly not. So, we're going to dismantle it now and just take it apart. So, the Nero 5 is super simple to take apart. Just twist the front off. There you go. You got the little propeller that sits over the motor. That's why it has such a low profile. We're going to give this a quick scrub with the toothbrush. Now there's no wondering why this wave maker performance has reduced so much because this thing is absolutely filthy but getting in there with a the toothbrush and just getting rid of all of that uh, really stubborn algae and then following up with the green scourer and really getting into it giving a really solid scrub and making sure all the components are clean uh, and just to get the wave maker performing again so you can see how dirty the water is um, and no surprise at all how much it affects the wave maker's performance So we've got it all washed now, I'm gonna get it back in the tank. I just wanna show you how simple it is to actually put this unit back together. Now, like that, that just goes over the motor. That's connected. 
the front of the pump, clicks on like that, and boom, that is done. Clean as whistle. So the citric acid actually worked pretty well um, compared to even the vinegar that I use. I reckon it cleaned better and a lot easier um, than when I use vinegar. So uh, we'll get the magnet on, lower this into the tank. Wave hands back in, clean up. And if I show you the water, that is everything that was on the WaveMaker. So you can see why this sort of stuff can hinder the performance of your WaveMaker and why it's so important to clean it because that is a whole load of crap that was on the Impella and the frame of it itself. So citric acid, big thumbs up. So now we can just turn this back on. And I want to see if there's a huge difference. I reckon instantly you can see the performance is better. It's pushing a lot harder the way with the bubbles that's obviously in it so yeah so super simple way to keep your wave makers clean just a bit of citric acid into two liters of water which is a 75 gram tub um, and just soak it in there for about 20 25 minutes then give it a good scrub with either a toothbrush as well as a little scourer and then make sure your wave makers are operating 100 as you can see from the flow back here it's pushing a lot harder which is Fantastic. So if you guys learned something from that, please hit that like button, smash the subscribe, and my friends, until next time, peace.